Hey everyone, my name is Zelos Phoenix, and you're tuned into Thursday Night Smackdown and Cleon as we kick things off with the new number one contender for the world heavyweight title, The Undertaker. I want to take this time to talk about the championship poll we had last week on Smackdown. That's right, we asked you guys to vote for what kind of new championship you want to see on Smackdown, and by God, you voted for some pretty good ones. They sure did. Uh, things like Cruiserweight and Hardcore were the most popular. We also had some requests for Intercontinental, Million Dollar Championship, a bunch of these good ones. So what we want to do is, since we know no matter which one of those championships we pick, someone will be disappointed, what we might try to do, and we want some feedback on this as well, is what we might try to do is instead combine some of those title ideas into one championship and award it to a superstar at Deserted. And by award, I mean they have to earn it. They're not going to be given it for free. They will have to fight it. We don't know who, we don't know what title belt yet. So that is our idea. Again, taking some of the ideas you guys gave us last week and combining them into one single championship belt. And we'll see where things roll from there. If you have some feedback on that, let us know. We appreciate everything you guys have been telling us as far as feedback goes on the UDF era. And we're going to keep rolling along today because here comes The Undertaker. He's got something on his mind. He won a fatal four-way contest last week against Daniel Bryan, Sheamus, and Rob Van Dam. He has not missed a beat. And at Deserted, he will challenge Wade Barrett for the World Heavyweight title. Let's hear what he has to say. Well, wait a minute. Daniel Bryan from behind. What the heck? Referee in there to try and break it up. Daniel Bryan attacking The Undertaker from behind just now. What is this all about? Well, The Undertaker was bad-mouthing Daniel Bryan. He shouldn't have been doing that. I don't know why he thought he had to do that. Daniel Bryan was doing perfectly okay for himself. The Undertaker, I guess, taking it personally that Daniel Bryan left Kane. Oh, look at this, The Undertaker fighting back left Kane on Raw, and now The Undertaker sending Debray out of the ring, The Undertaker standing tall. He has come to put claim to his yard, his world heavyweight title, and he'll get that chance at Deserted. But right now, as we clear out Debray and The Undertaker, we're gonna move on to our first contest of the evening, a number one contendership match for the tag team titles. The New Millennia's Primo and Epico going to take on Edge and Christian. All right, which one of these two teams will be going to Deserted? <laughs> Maybe not Primo if he keeps that up. He misses Edge completely to kick things off. And there's a chop block. Going to make Primo pay for that mistake even more. I still want to know what the Devil the Undertaker thinks he was doing, bad-mouthing Daniel Bryan. d Bryan did nothing wrong to The Undertaker. Well, maybe not to The Undertaker, but he certainly abandoned Kane on Raw. Just came over to SmackDown. I don't even know why, and The Undertaker took it personally. Was that, e was that the reason The Undertaker returned last week to put a hurting on Daniel Bryan? And as a bonus, you know, he not only did he accomplish that, he's the number one contender for Wade Barrett's World Championship. Says that Barrett has some sins of his own, that he's encouraging corruption instead of bringing those winds of change he has promised. And you know what? I, to a degree, I would have to believe that. And here we have the new millennia cohorts, Primo and Epico in the ring right now. I don't know. I haven't seen much growth, much evolution in these superstars. As far as skill goes, they're certainly learning the tricks of the trade. They're learning how to be dirty fighters. They're learning how to ambush people backstage. Oh, don't even start with this rant again. This poor old same rant. 
What about Edge and Christian? They did some vile things to Big Show and Mark Henry last week. Well, to counter that, the New Millennia attacked DX, Triple H and Shawn Michaels backstage last week for no reason in the middle of an interview. Oh, Epico in now, taking advantage against Edge. But one of these two teams will be going to desert it as the number one contenders for the tag titles. You better believe that Wade Barrett is backstage rooting for his New Millennia cohorts here. His trainees, his students even. Last week we saw Unico fall just short of Drew McIntyre in a pretty good contest. Now Primo and Epico have their opportunity. They fell short to DX a couple weeks ago. Why are these guys in this match again? Because D-Generation X wants some revenge on them. Even if it means putting those titles up for grabs against the new millennia, they're going to do it. Of course, being the honorable man I am, I told them they had to earn their title shot here tonight against Edge and Christian. You should thank me, Zelos. I'm running your show for you. The only thing you can run is yourself out of town. As Epico now... Looking to take advantage against Edge, going to tweak the arm a bit. Christian has yet to be in this match. Here comes the camel clutch by one of the new millennia's trainees. Here we go, electric chair drop. Edge fights his way out. Not going to tap out tonight on SmackDown. Epico set in the corner. Here, can, here we go. Here comes the tag team antics of ENC. Double Irish whip. What are they going to do now? Double flat track. Flappin' Jack takes down Epico. Getting a little bit too excited for my own good here. Here we go, here comes the, no, not a sidewalk slam, but a backbreaker. Christian tries to drop the elbow, nobody home. Epico counters, no, Christian counters, single man Flapjack. Edge and Christian are making us some pancakes here today in the form of the new millennia. Interesting that Unico has not come out with these guys tonight. He came out with them against Degeneration X, of all people. That, that didn't work out too well for him. Really nothing has been working out for the new millennia. Oh, nonsense, Zelos. Just because they haven't won any championships yet doesn't mean they're a failure. They're constantly in the picture. It doesn't matter whether you've won or lost. If you're constantly in the picture, you're doing something right. Well, maybe. I can't help but think these guys are in the picture, though. Just riding on the success of Wade Barrett. Oh, nice wheel kick by Christian. And that time the elbow connects without incident. Here he goes again. Staring down Primo in the corner. Primo knows this is probably the last opportunity for the new millennia to get in the tag title scene. Because the powerhouse, they still have their rematch clause. And if E&C go to Deserted, you bet we're going to have one heck of a tag team title match. The last time DX and E&C were in the ring together, they tore down the Superstars Arena. Here we go, Christian, putting Epico up on the top rope. E&C has been on a roll lately. They knocked off the former tag team champions, and now, starting with this superplex, they might be able to knock off the new millennia. Come on, Epico. Show him your skills. Do something other than what you're doing right now. Oh my god, he didn't do it. He's still doing what he's doing right now. Where's that delinquent Christian going? Oh my god! I didn't know he could be that athletic. Christian and Edge both very athletic. They've competed in some great matches in the past. Some amazing... Oh, look at this! Christian with a roll-up! Christian with a roll-up! No! Epico counters, reverses the pile. Look at this, he reverses, no! Christian reverses it back! Christian now in complete control. Now Epico is gonna fight back. Edge and Primo just toying with each other. Oh man, Christian had to kick out that time, was not able to reverse it, and Epico quickly, quickly gets to his tag team partner, but Christian quick draws him. No, Primo counters, here we go. He's bringing Christian up to the corner now. Gonna mock, oh, Christian fights back though. Christian, where is the missile drop kick? Oh man, here we go. No. Primo just got in the match. He can't lose already. Here comes the kill switch. But Edge is getting counted out here. Christian into a cover. Edge has got to get out of the ring. Oh, Primo has too much time to recover. Christian has to let go of the pin. Bad luck for E and C. Good luck for the new millennia, though. 
because now they can say they survived the kill switch, but maybe Primo won't be able to survive this tag team encounter. Here we go, double backdrop. I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed with E&C so far. To see them dominate the likes of the powerhouse last week, and now they're doing the same to Primo and Epico. Maybe the D-Generation X will have quite the fight on their life. Of their life. Look at this, you've got me doing it now. Well, I get the gist of what you're saying. E and C, their momentum cannot be denied at this current juncture. Here comes another double team move. It's what they do best. Oh, this time it makes him pay with the flapjack. You see the crowd calling for the concerto. They don't want to do concerto now, though, because they'd get disqualified. Oh, but Edge just... He's going to help Primo pull a hamstring or something. Fireman's carry. Oh, Primo counters. Manages to escape it. Maybe the new millennia can finally find some momentum. Some offense on their side. They're going to do so. Here we go. Edge is off the ropes now. Double forearm smash. Oh, look at this. The double leg drop. That's the way to get back in the match if you're the new millennia. Oh, but they gave Edge too much time to escape. Epico looking a little damaged there. I don't know. Him and Primo talking some strategy as Edge and Christian tagging each other in and out. I don't know what's going on over there. This is mind game, Zelos. That's what they do best. The ultimate opportunist. And Christian, the master of the kill switch. They've got some pretty good mind games in the past. They've had it. And now they're going to try abusing it again. But it won't work against the new millennia. And it won't even work against DX if they win this thing. We'll have to see who wins this thing. Thus far, Christian right back where he... Oh, no, maybe not. Primo reverses. Oh, nice Huracurana by Primo. Building it back for the new millennia. Edge and Christian, they go as far back as the brood. So many times have they been the tag team champions. Primo and Epico at one time were tag team champions as well, but they have not been able to grace the WWE Universe with another title reign, but there's a Tornado DDT by Primo. Christian says no, though. Counters him. Here we go. Boston Crab locked in. Epico knows he's in trouble. Here comes Edge, though. He clotheslines him. Stops him from breaking up the submission. Now Primo's going to have to find some way to reverse this thing. Counter on his own. He does not have the aid of his tag team partner right now. Oh, the referee trying to get everyone out there. In the chaos, Primo manages to get the rope break. Primo's tougher than you give him credit for, Zelos. He was just able to counter that deadly maneuver. And oh my god, that knee. That knee to the gut. And now he's just taking complete control of Christian. Christian might be a former world champion, but he's not faced the likes of Primo. Primo, of course. Was he tag champions with Carlito at some point as well? I forget. But there's so much heritage, so much background on the part of Primo and Epico. They have just decided to align themselves, though, with the, the sick and twisted antics of our world heavyweight champion, Wade Barrett. And they're under the dark cloud, but that dark cloud also has the top of the mountain in this case. Look at this. Here we go. There's another Huracurana. Epico, I think, pulling a distraction as well. I'm not sure what he's in here doing. He's What is he doing? Oh, Christian kicks out. Epico getting a little too antsy there. And now Christian, he's going to take advantage. Primo backing off, trying to buy himself some more time. No, Christian flips him over the snapmare. Edge almost taken out in the crossfire. Let's see what is the NC planning. They're talking to each other. Looks like they're going to finally settle on a certain move. And it's going to be that flapjack again. It worked so well for them in the past. I think Primo has incurred like three of those by now. And Edge is going right back to the hamstring. No, no, Primo is an advocate of high-flying moves, but if his hamstring is taken out, that's going to that's gonna be a damper on his strategy completely. Edge and Christian, meanwhile, their strategy is tag team wrestling. It's what they do best. It's what they're showing us right now. Here's the fourth flapjack. My God, these flapjacks. 
Edge and Christian making their own house of pancakes at this point. As Epico paces on the apron like a, a caged animal. Edge into a cover. The Northern Lights suplex. No. Primo kicks out. To the credit of these tag teams fighting ENC, despite ENC being on top of their game, clearly they're able to survive, but is it only a matter of time before the new millennia finds themselves on the losing end, just as the powerhouse did last week? I've got to admit, it's looking pretty bad for the new millennia right now. Primo hasn't been able, oh no, he's down here as well. Here we go, here's another cover by Edge. Epico, no, Epico looming. Primo kicks out and Edge knows better. And to go for the pin, the deciding fall without Christian backing him. Christian out of position there, might have been hurt on the outside. And now Primo's going to take advantage of it. Here we go, Primo tagging in Epico. Epico knocks down Edge. Oh no, he takes Christian off the apron as well. Oh, but Epico dazed, he's out on his feet. Something happened to Epico. Oh, and Edge busts him open with that chop to the forehead. Oh man, the new millennia in a bad way right now. Christian flies. No, Epico rolls out of the way. Epico hasn't been looking too good for the latter half of this match. He's just not able to move even. We saw him get the hot tag, but he hasn't been able to do anything. I think he's winded. Oh man, did you see that devastation? Here we go, but Christian... Christian's in the ring still. Oh, no! Oh, no! The new millennia won by DQ! How the devil did that happen? Christian was in the ring for the referee's five count, and the referee has disqualified Edge and Christian. I don't believe this. That means the new millennia has become the number one contenders for the tag titles. Are you kidding me? Well, Cody Rhodes putting in a good word for his buddy Damian Sandow, but tonight Cody Rhodes is going to go one-on-one -on -one with the great white Sheamus. Sheamus with a great showing in that fatal forward last week. Here we go, though. Oh, Rhodes ducks the clothesline, and Sheamus just leveled the referee by mistake. Ref down. Rhodes taking advantage, but no, here comes Drew McIntyre. Oh, my God, no. Drew McIntyre, and he makes a beeline for Rhodes and chop blocks him right down. Sheamus, all kinds of confused. He didn't expect this. Drew McIntyre, Rhodes trying to fight back, but no, McIntyre levels him with a clothesline. Are you kidding me? Look at this. And now McIntyre reviving the referee. Look at this, Rhodes is down. No, ref, don't count. Oh my god. Drew McIntyre just screwed Rhodes out of this match. Drew McIntyre just got some semblance of revenge here tonight, costing Rhodes his match against Sheamus, and I still can't believe that the new millennia won over ENC via DQ. Edge and Christian had that match won, but Christian out of position and the referee counted him out. Unbelievable tonight. But we do have one more match to get to, and it was a match that was requested by the dead man himself. That's right, look at it, here we go. Undertaker wants to go one-on-one -on -one with Daniel Bryan. They want to settle their differences here tonight. Apparently, The Undertaker not done with D-Bry, D-Bry not done with The Undertaker, taking offense to the fact that he lost that fatal four-way to the dead man last week. And after the, the verbal abuse from The Undertaker, Daniel Bryan could take no more. He came to give Undertaker a piece of his mind, but the dead man fought back and took him out of his yard. Now these two will go one on one here tonight.
Wade Barrett is happy with this situation, I guarantee you that. He was looking forward with Breed to see The Undertaker and D-Bride destroy each other in this match, and I have a feeling that's exactly what we're going to see. But right now what we're seeing is Undertaker delivering that soup bone to Daniel Bryan and sending him to the outside of the ring. These two guys taking exception to each other for different reasons. The Undertaker, oh, who introduces Deep Bright to the steel steps. The Undertaker upset with Daniel Bryan because Bryan unannounced left Raw, left Kane high and dry. And Deep Bright upset with The Undertaker because, well, in my opinion, The Undertaker taught Daniel Bryan a lesson last week. And now he's looking to teach him another one this week. Well, Daniel Bryan might have lost last week, but we've seen it in his matches against Sheamus. Steve Bryan doesn't make the same mistake twice. Well, I suppose that's true. We'll have to see, though, if Daniel Bryan makes a mistake against the veteran, The Undertaker, here tonight, who so far is just continuing what we saw last week. And now look at Undertaker. He's using one of Daniel Bryan's own submission holds against him. Is this maybe a bit personal for The Undertaker? Well... Undertaker is known to flip out when things don't quite go his way. He probably took offense to Daniel Bryan leaving, but he had to know that Daniel Bryan was leaving for the right reason. He wasn't leaving to leave Kane high and dry. He wasn't insulting Kane or doing anything to that accord. But the Undertaker, he doesn't care. He just wants to teach people the meaning of the word respect. Well, if anyone can teach the meaning of the word respect, it is the Undertaker who commands some of the largest amount of respect in the entire WWE. And thus far, Undertaker playing a perfect game against Debry. Daniel Bryan not sure what to do against the dead man. Look at this, Undertaker coming off the ropes. Oh, he just slams him into the table. Look at that. Oh, my God. Daniel Bryan might want to apologize to the Undertaker right now. Otherwise, The Undertaker's not going to stop. Look at this, Zalos. He slammed him off the announce table, even. Undertaker slamming him off the announce table. Daniel Bryan, though, to his credit, is still... Oh, wait, look at this. d fights back. Oh, The Undertaker... No, I thought he was sending Taker into the announce table. Maybe Taker thought that as well, but Daniel Bryan choreographed that one. And he takes him down. Undertaker into the ring to break the count, though, as is d -Bry. And Undertaker misses with the boot. Now Daniel Bryan back on top. Sends him into the corner. Drop kick. What's next for these two gladiators? Daniel Bryan, let's see. Whips him into the corner again. Could be looking for another drop kick. Undertaker sees it coming this time. It hits the Bulldog. The Demon of Death Valley, the Undertaker. Daniel Bryan, oh! Undertaker took too much time. D. Bryan not intimidated. Probably, if only because he is angry at the dead man right now. As is Undertaker not going to be intimidated by anybody when he's angry. That's a good way to put it, Zalos. Oh, look at this. Daniel Bryan, he rolls Taker up. No, Undertaker kicks out. But Daniel Bryan right back on top of him now. The Undertaker controlled most of the early going of this match, but now Daniel Bryan trying to find his way against the dead man. Imagine how Daniel Bryan will feel. Oh, man, if he loses twice in a row to the dead man, the returning Undertaker, the legend, the phenom, went for a submission, but Daniel Bryan too far in the ropes. Undertaker's got to be more resourceful than that. Daniel Bryan is a master tactician, and he's not going to submit this early in the match. Taker would do well to instead try wearing him down, because if he gets that LaBelle lock locked in, it's all over. Well, Undertaker has seldom submitted in his career. Actually, maybe only one time I can even recall. And the match was thrown out as a draw. But in any case, Daniel Bryan will try. He's got Undertaker where he wants him. No, maybe the dead man has him right where he wants him. Oh, but Daniel Bryan powers out. Good for him. Oh, and there's the kick to the hamstring. The Undertaker down. Here comes this brutal assault on the part of Daniel Bryan. And here comes the knockout kick. Undertaker leveled right now, and Daniel Bryan could have this one, Cleon. He's going for it. Undertaker in the ropes, though. It doesn't happen, but this does happen! The LaBelle lock is locked in! The Undertaker's in trouble here, Zalos. He's nowhere near the ropes. 
Undertaker has to crawl, has to squeeze every ounce of strength he's got in him right now to try and break this hold because if it's in for much longer, he's going to... Oh, look at this! Undertaker counters his way out of it. Are you kidding me? I can't believe the Undertaker managed to fight his way out of the label lock. What kind of man is this? Here's the sidewalk slam by the dead man. And now look at the Undertaker. He could be going for... Here we go! Here's the choke slam! Choke slam to Daniel Bryan! And I think Daniel Bryan might be done right here. Take her into a cover. Daniel Bryan, no! Daniel Bryan survives, amazing, amazing. I can't believe that. I didn't even expect Daniel Bryan to be able to kick out of the choke slam, but by God, he did it. And now Daniel Bryan sending Taker crashing into the canvas with a suplex. The Undertaker, I thought, had all the momentum in the world. Oh wait, Daniel Bryan now, he's going for a cover. And, oh, Dead Man kicks out the Undertaker. Not going to be foiled that easily. Daniel Bryan sends him into the corner, or the ropes, rather. Oh, he just sends him crashing into the ropes. Let's see what's d -Bry got in mind next. Another suplex. Oh, no, Brain Buster, even. And the Undertaker's busted open. My god. Daniel Bryan might actually do this thing. Look at d -Bry. Northern Lights suplex. Undertaker in trouble here. Oh, he caught the Undertaker with the Northern Lights suplex. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, yes. Daniel Bryan, he's got it all zealous. He's the entire package. He caught Undertaker with a, an unfamiliar maneuver. The Undertaker wasn't expecting it. He came prepared for the label lock. He had the choke slam even. But Undertaker was not prepared for the resourcefulness, the cunning of Daniel Bryan. d -Bry using the Northern Lights suplex to his advantage, and he's actually knocked off the Undertaker right here. Look at this, you're right, the Undertaker wasn't expecting that at all. The dead man got caught in that Northern Lights suplex. And Daniel Bryan reaps the benefits. Oh, but look at this. Oh no, don't turn around my gold now. Undertaker, he's not too happy about that one. Here we go, is the choke slam. The Undertaker gonna make Daniel Bryan pay for that shifty victory. Wait a minute, oh no! Here's Primo! Oh, Primo attacks the Undertaker! Oh yeah, and here's the new millennia, here comes the cavalry! Oh my god, they're just beating down the dead man! Wade Barrett said that Primo had a gift for him here tonight, and I'm guaranteeing you that's what this is right here. No, they got a chair! The dead man's going to pay for this one, Zalos. Yes, you don't mess with the new millennia. Oh my god, The Undertaker's just been destroyed. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next week for more SmackDown.